talking about bunkai a little bit. Um, bunkai is the application of techniques in your kata. And when you're starting bunkai, it's totally okay and in fact uh, recommended that you keep things very simple. Uh, a punch is a punch, a block is a block, and you simply move on without getting yourself too tangled up. But I'd like to explore a little bit how you can condense both timing and trying to stay truer to the heart of the technique uh, when you're looking at your bunkai. And I'd like to take one specific example um, from a kata. Uh, it's called Pinan Shodan. Uh, you may have it in your system, you may not. You may have something very similar because, as you'll note as you continue studying, a lot of concepts tend to be shared. Now, in Pinan Shodan, at one point, what we have happening is the arms coming together, rising and separating, dropping down following up with a punch, coming back to an on guard position, doing a back technique, and then setting out. So that's how we do it. You probably have something similar. So when you look at it um, at a very base level, it happens one, two, three, four, five, and then set. Now what we want to try to do is take that and accelerate it a little bit. So it starts to look more like So you notice the timing is a little different. And of course it's going to change when we have our opponent too. So, if I bring Eric in. The first thing you might start doing when he comes in with that punch, right, is you may block, right? We have a punch coming to our face, so we're going to block. Then what I'm going to do is drop that hand down, grab a hold of it so it doesn't punch me, and then hit him here. Okay? So that kind of makes sense, you know, we have a punch coming to our face, we're blocking it, we're moving it down, and we're punching. Now what doesn't make sense with that bunkai is how much we're exposing our lower body for no particular gains. So he's coming in with that punch. I'm moving this all the way up and I'm moving this all the way back. So not only am I moving this out of play here this way, I'm also exposing all this body here. So I'm really taking a large leap of faith that he's got nothing going on with this hand, nothing going on with this leg, and nothing going on with this leg. Okay. Basically, I'm just expanding and giving him as many targets as he needs. And I'm making it slower for me to hit him back. Okay? So when you start trying to put that into more of a real life scenario, it tends not to make sense. So what we can do is start to add that second hand in. Okay? So he's coming in with that punch. Instead of blocking with this one, okay, we can start blocking with the back one. That makes sense too, right? So now what we're doing is we're covering with this hand here, securing it. And now we can either tweak sort of an arm bar, or we can let this ride up to the head. Or if we want to stay very true to kata, we can come up, tweak it over, and then punch. Okay? Because kata comes up, down, and hit. So this is a little truer. Um, and we've condensed our timing a little bit. We've gotten a little closer to um, what you might call sendo sen. Getting a little closer. So he's coming in, he moves, I move. Okay? But, we're still in Gono Sen because we're blocking first. Blocking, hit it this way. Okay. So, if we want to try to condense that even more, as he's coming in with that punch, right? We move in, and as we're blocking, we hit at the same time. So, we're hitting at the same moment he's hitting. Okay. So, one more time, he comes in, bang, coming in this way. Now, if we continue doing the kata, these hands come down, so we're going to collapse it down, off balance it and follow up with a strike as he's falling. Okay, so let's try it on the other side, just so you can get a different angle at it. He's going to come up with the right hand again. Here, tuck it down, here, and then strike him as he's coming down. So that's much closer, closer to send no send. Okay, we're coming up, blocking, hitting at the same time, coming down, striking, and hitting. Now there's some other more subtle things going on there. For example, we're using, we're using looseness to tightness, and then we're also using a heavy body drop to create the throw. And as he's falling and off balance, we hit him as he goes down, catching him much more off guard. Okay. You'll notice in your training that uh, if, you come in, if we hit somebody when they're ready for it, they can take a lot of punishment. But if we distract them and we hit them somewhere else, it's much more effective because they don't have that tightness. Okay. And they don't have the mental preparation for it. And of course, if you combine that with a, a vital point type of strike, uh, system, then you, you have a little bit more knowledge still. So I hope that uh, helps with your investigation, not just of this piece, but of all your pieces as well. Condense that timing and see where it takes you. Thank you.